Welcome to the ship show Every single day A new flavor of fuckery Cause everybody's such you see And they're dumber than a bag of quads Monday, Bullshit. Tuesday, Bullshit. Wednesday hey, the And then four more days of increasingly stupid Ridiculous, ignorant, bolder, dash, poppycock, bollocks And fuckery is humble and fred there you go that's an (laughs) old-fashioned intro that uh that goes back a really long time that stinger as we call it in the business that would be easily humble and fred 1989 90 this thing from dan and uh, james earl jones wow isn't that something This is Humble and Fred. I thought that was lost to the ages. I didn't think you still had that kicking around. That's you know, I think it's interesting that we thought that Dan's voice <laughs> sounded... <laughs> it's, it's, hey, hoo, 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 hoo. I think it's interesting that... Interesting ale, interesting ale. That we thought... that we. Well, I shouldn't say we thought. Let me take that back. That we didn't care... That Dan and James Earl voice, they didn't match exactly. We thought it was close enough, which is a compliment to you, Daniel. Back in 89. Or whenever well, whenever was, it yeah. was. That, that yeah. goes back that, a lot. It's one of the lo- oldest things that we've ever kept and uh, used. We, we used it quite a bit. Yeah, I, uh, I had forgotten that James Earl Jones was the voice of CNN. Mm-hmm. As brief as that as that is or was, but yeah, there's a lot of. I'm sorry. Tributes. What do you mean? As brief as what was? Well, that you know his that this is CNN. Uh, I, I I was to understand that it was uh, on for quite a long time. Was it? No, not? I don't mean that. I mean oh, the actual time. It, that's oh, I a see. Couple right, of seconds. Right. Yes, that's yes. all. Yeah. That's what I mean from that standpoint. Uh, I get from, you now. Yeah, not from the longevity, more from the uh, you know what I'm saying. Oh, how how just a short sting it is. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. I saw last night they were doing one of those biography things on him and uh, died at 93. That's a good long run. Mm-hmm. He went in. Dan, this is for you, uh, for us sci-fi nerds. He went in and recorded all those Darth Vader bits. The uh, Luke, I am your father. And he only got a couple thousand dollars for it. Like one Seriously? of the most, like, yes. Oh. Like it, it wasn't oh. like untold riches. It, you know, he got a regular voiceover gig to go and be the voice of Darth Vader. Wow. That's something else. Because yeah. that he, he's one of the, the associated with that franchise, like nothing else in it. Yeah, one of the, the most iconic history. moments in movie history is when Darth Vader reveals to Mark Hamill that he's Mark Hamill's father. Mm. What movie was that? Uh, it was called um, uh, Turner and Hooch. That's the name of that movie. <laughs> no, I still have not seen any of this. No, that's something. No, no, it's too late now. You've ne- what? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Never seen any of the Star, Star Wars, Wars movies. No. I used to sit, Danny used to say when he was a kid, would say, let's watch it. And I'd sit and watch. And it was usually middle of the day after I'd get up at 4.30 and um, I'd fall asleep. And I've never taken it upon myself to go through all. But I'm not that, I'm not big on that stuff anyway. But no, I, I can't. I can honestly say I haven't. Isn't that something? I'm unique, I guess. Yeah, you are. Wow. Yeah, you are. But because Mm -hmm. the movie has so little to do with space and so much to do with, like, I'm trying to remember the original, there was like the elevator pitch for Star Wars was almost like, it was like a Western in space. Right, right, right. Uh, Do we want to go through the uh, James Earl Jones uh, Letterman top 10? Let's do a couple of them. Uh, Dan sent me this, and uh, before we officially start the show, here's David Letterman and his top ten as voiced by James Earl Jones. From the home office, top ten things that sound cool uh, when spoken by James Earl Jones. Oh, Uh the famous actor, a fine actor, a lovely man. Top ten things that sound cool when spoken by James Earl Jones. Uh, James, nice to see you. Thank you very much. 
was in character. Yeah, I like that guy that was here earlier. Uh, top ten things that sound cool when spoken by James Earl Jones. Here we go, number ten. I can believe it's not butter. Yeah. <laughs> Objects in mirror may be closer than they appear. Number eight. J Lo in the house. J Lo in the house. Yeah, that's not a cool. Number seven. Click here now for the hottest sex sites on the web. <laughs> Number six. And the Academy Award for Best Picture goes to... Dude, where's my car? Shall we go on? There's only five more. We get the idea. I want to see what number one is. All right. All right. I like that. Number five. You're not fully clean until you're zestfully clean. You mean I get all these great funk classics on just one CD or cassette? Wow. Yeah. Number three. Number three. Well, now, wait a minute. That, that makes no sense at all. The number two cool thing uh, when spoken by James Earl Jones. Meow, 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 meow. Sounds cool when spoken by James Earl Jones. What's There you go. There you go. James Earl Jones, no more. But you know who we've got? Who? Dan Duran. This episode of Humble and Fred is being broadcast to the world from our state-of-the-art Humble and Fred studio in Toronto, from our Brampton facility featuring a prestigious pool, and from a trailer in the courses with the Dennis Duranis bust. I'm Dan Duran, broadcasting live from the Kevin House Zoom Theater, and brought to you by the Retirement Sherpa, the Chambers Plan, Boron One, Bodog, our returning sponsor, Kelsey's Original Roadhouse, home of the Humble and Fred end of summer 13th anniversary podcast party on September 25th and our newest sponsor Ridley Funeral Home and now here are two men who never ever became one of the Canadian far righter influencers that took Russian money for far right trumping because they were holding out for more money it's Humble and Fred Big show for you today. Uh, Ralph Ben Mergi will join us. And uh, I understand the uh, word on the street is that Ralph Ben Mergi will be joining us at the 13th anniversary podcast party at Kelsey's. Yeah, that works out for him uh, being a Hamilton fella. And uh, we're going to be in Burlington. So, yeah, that works well for Bruce. I mean, uh, Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. That's right. Oh, I Ralph, also, well, I, for Bruce. I get them mixed up. Bruce Dobig and all the time in my head. Isn't that weird? But anyway. That is weird. And they're so, like, they couldn't be any more. Polar opposites. That was, that's what they, they call that. Polar opposites. opposites. Yeah. 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 So, never seen Star Trek. Um Star Wars. Star Wars. Never seen Star Trek, obviously. Yeah. Hey, by the way, if, if you were to guide Fred through the Star Wars franchise. Well, I was just going to get to what, that. I mean. Oh, okay. No, I, where would I start? Yeah, would you start at, uh, at the first one that was put out or would you start at episode one? Oh, I know what you mean because they, uh, I don't know. I, I think that at some point in your life, out of just curiosity, you know, like. You're a curious fellow. You're interested in all sorts of things. You would think that just out of curiosity, you might sit down and go, what was all, especially from an, an historical, like 1977, put yourself in, in the place of a, of a moviegoer. And when that, that, that scroll hit the screen, it was fantastic. And all these special effects, which now look like, you know, speaking yeah. of Danny, Danny could do it in his basement. 
Just out of curiosity, I would imagine one day you'll sit down. Maybe. Well, I, you know, I've actually been there. I, as I say, over the years, it, when the buzz was taking place, and you know, Danny, even Mel, into it, I, I had that intention. I'd sit down and go, okay, yeah, I'm going to watch this, and then I just never did. Weird, eh? You know what movie like franchise? I can't say I watched one of them beginning to end. I didn't. Yeah. Well, one day you should. And I want to just come back to Star yeah. Star Wars in a second because I'm. One of the franchises, movie franchises that were that was big for me and my kids, and maybe Dan and Colton, was all the Harry Potter movies, which I've seen. I saw them when they came out, and a couple mm-hmm. Christmases ago, the girls and I, for the entire time they were here, for four, four, four or five days they stayed with me, we rewatched all the Harry Potter movies. They're just great movies. You don't even have to be have read the books or anything. They're just well-done movies. Right. Have either of you seen, seen those, any Harry Potter? Well, I know you haven't. Hey, Dan, have you ever seen a Harry Potter movie? I've seen I've seen a few of them. Uh, I know Colton saw them all. Yeah, of course he did. And re- recently, Lisa was appalled that I hadn't seen them all. So we started, we started down at, down at uh, well. You see, Harry's a wizard. First one. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's yeah. just there's a lot of great actors in the movies, and, and uh, it's you know they're they're very well done. Back to Star Wars, though. Dan and I were so into it. I remember where we were. We were in Hawaii when the second one came up. The Return of the Jedi, I believe. Do you not Could remember well be, us yeah. lining I, up? Oh, I remember that. I just don't remember where. Whatever it was, series, whatever yeah, whatever yeah. that movie would have been in the early 1980s. Yeah. Uh, you and I were in Hawaii. Well, See, anytime I, that or Star, uh, Star Trek, Howard and I were, you know, Thirsting for anything. Well, that's yeah. That's because that we just yeah. we discovered that's weed at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's it. Because you know, I envy that. Like, I don't know. I think the last time I got excited about a movie and lined up for it was The Exorcist, like nineteen seventy four. But I've never been the movie buff that you, Howard, in particular, Dan, have. But uh, it, again, I I'd love to be excited about a movie coming out trying to think what movie i'm excited about right now um there's a couple things i actually darren ye darren ye uh just posted on our uh on our group chat which as we've mentioned has uh, changed its name from radio dudes to uh cock face lies and bro chats mm-hmm. just in case you're following along on uh, september 20th the uh tragically hip documentary comes out yeah, I was talking to Ivor about that over the on the weekend. Ivor Hamilton, former uh, record executive. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it's like a four part series, an hour each. Yes. So it's quite lengthy. On that note, I'm listening to Sirius XM The Spectrum yesterday, and I just missed it. Apparently, they played a tra- tragically hip song, and the disc jockey or the host that was on at the time referred back to it and said she had gotten this letter from a Canadian about the tragically hip. She played the song, and she actually, and I forget what her name is, but she actually sort of made the comment, oh, not really for me, but... <laughs> 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 yeah, and I was taken aback. Uh, but, yeah, because... Sirius XM, you never. Well, there's the Tragically Hip channel, but that's out of Canada. Mm-hmm. But as far as like Spectrum, any of the stuff out of the States, you never hear that. I can't remember. It must have been around the uh, release of this documentary, but I was reading an article somewhere in the last uh, few days since we've all mm-hmm. uh, convened. And uh, it was it was about the fact that they were a, a, a huge band in Canada and um, mm-hmm. obviously great with border states. Michigan and uh, mm-hmm. Western New York. But they chose, like, I always thought the tragically hip story was that they were just mishandled by record companies. But they sort of chose this path. According to this article, I should find it. Oh, yeah? Well, m- more or less, more than I would have thought that they chose not to. Well, how do you choose not to? Like, what did just, they do? I mean, that- some, yeah, some record deal or some record thing that they decided not to go with or they. Chose oh. to be more autonomous than the record company wanted them to be. 
Yeah, because it's hard to believe that, you know, on the, a lot of those border towns and border states, as you say, they were so, I mean, so popular. How did that not get through to the powers that be in the rest of the country? You know, it's hard to. I really wish I had the article in front of me. I would send it yeah. to both of you fellas. Um, anyway, I'm looking forward to that. And there's a few other movies that I can't remember now that I've seen some trailers for. But but when we were younger, I really... There was, th- there was the Star Wars franchise. There was the Rocky franchise that I was into. Any Star yeah, Trek movies those. I was into. Yeah, the Rocky stuff I saw. I loved that. And again, uh, Dan and I discovered... We were roommates when I was... 22 or 23 and uh, we would get high on the marijuana mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, sit at, at our apartment at night and watch star old Star Trek series. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. All and the just laugh like, yeah. and just be absorbed and laughing like monkeys because we were just high young Western Canadian boys. Remember back in the day there was a movie. Do you remember Billy Jack? Yes. It was a great movie. And then I, who was it played a Bo Svensson or something? That's right. But then as the franchise went on, they changed the lead actor and it sucked after that. There was three or four of them or whatever, but I'm laughing only because in those days that was like a, the sort of early, like pretty violent revengey kind Mm -hmm. of thing. But, but now you go, I bet you, 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 you compare that and contrast with a Jason Statham movie. (laughs) (laughs) I saw this movie this year that it came out called The Beekeeper, where mm-hmm. oh yeah we saw that. Together. Did we see that yeah. together? You yeah, and I. Yeah, we yeah we uh, couldn't believe the number. Of people that <laughs> <It's happened>. just, <laughs> the the per person beat or killed per second whatever minute versus like Billy <laughs> Billy Jack. A couple guys got roughed up. Jason with a bat <laughs> with a big <laughs> stick. Right. <laughs> the Jason Statham movies, like all those movies now, there's just so much crazy violence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just talking brief. about it. What's that? <laughs> go ahead. No, you go. No, no you, go just, uh, you go ahead. You go, Dan. Yeah, Dan, you okay. go, Dan. Well, go for Dan. <laughs> with, we're talking about stars. I was just noticing the other day that uh, you see a lot of, of stars that are like multimillionaires. Did you did you guys read that Selena Gomez became a billionaire? It's on the Forbes billionaire list now. Well, I, really, Selena Gomez. Selena wow. Gomez murders Good in the building. Her. Only murders in the building, which I've been watching. Yeah, she. Well, because she she's been famous with with a certain, you know, with 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 people that so yeah, billionaires. So Selena Gomez, thanks to her beauty brand. Yeah, yeah. One point three billion dollars at thirty two. And she founded something called Rare Beauty Brands. Isn't that something? So she would be worth more than Steve Martin and Martin Short and everybody else who works on that show combined. (laughs) Yeah, you'd think so. Uh, Speaking of which, Tiff going on. I saw the, the list of people just walking around the streets of Toronto. Bill Murray and, uh, Again, to me, Moore and Angelina Jolie, Springsteen. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, I, I know a lot of people, you know, are motivated to go down there to stargaze. Like, I've never. There's another thing. I guess I'm not much of a movie guy. guy, guy I've never been to TIFF. I've never been to anything around TIFF. I've never been to a cocktail party with TIFF all the years we worked in radio. And none, none of that. I know you guys have. But. Well, Dan has. I've been to, I've been to okay. a couple of premieres. Mm-hmm. Dan just yeah, used to go down there and drink, hobnob. with, drink, yeah, hobnob and drink with strangers, mm-hmm. hoping someone would yeah. notice. <laughs> do you know? <laughs> do you know who I am? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he wanted to bet a superstar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, well, and and I remember I say to Dan, "What are you doing?" Oh, I just went to a bar by myself and just sat around. Mm. Talk to people. Talk you know, to people. I'm like, you know, talk to it's people. all industry. You know, a lot no, of industry people. When you get past a uh, the, the doorman or whatever, you know who loves Tiff. You, you, I know you know her. I'm gonna I'm gonna mention her name, but she and her girlfriends just love it, and that's ex wife Randy. Ex wife yeah. Randy every year, and I know a lot of and, and ex GFR. Let me go through my exes. Um, ex, Rachel would buy. Her and her friends buy like multiple movie passes, and it's a big event. But Randy mm-hmm. and her oh, friends, yeah. they do this, Dan. 
and Fred, but uh, you were talking about hobnobbing with celebrities. Ex-wife Randy and a couple of her lady friends will get all dolled up and go sit at like the Four Seasons in Yorkville or they some of the other sort of TIFF headquarters and just mm-hmm. hang out. <laughs> I remember her telling me this once a few years ago and it was just all sounded like I, uh, the last thing I would ever do in my life is just hang out hoping to see some celebrities in the lobby. But it's a big deal here. Yeah, well, that's great if you're into it. That, yep. I guess, would be fun. Um, it would be. It would be. Play it would, your eyes a upon a superstar. <laughs> it would oh. be fun if, you know, you, did, you didn't want to. If, if, for, if for you and I. Wait a second. We have to leave our house and get. Do we have to wear pants? <laughs> sorry, no, exactly. Sorry. I, I have to drive down the 410. <laughs> Don't think right. so. I'm not putting yeah. on pants until Thanksgiving. You know. <sighs> You talk about movies and being, again, motivated to see something or take an interest in it, as you fellows have described. This Bill Murray uh, movie, it's called Bing the Great Dane. A Great Dane, it's a dog movie. And apparently it will steal your heart. Now, that's something. I just think of Bill Murray and the characters he plays and then about a dog that you fall in love with. To me, that mm-hmm. that's, that's something I want to see. Uh, the guys on Smartless were talking to an actress again i wish i could have had a better memory but they were this is pretty recent for me talking to an actress about being in a movie with bill murray and mm-hmm. describe do you, do you know that bill murray doesn't have an agent doesn't have an agent and the only way to get a hold of him is through fax did you know this like he's almost like a recluse and if if he wants to be in your movie you, you, you if you want to ask him you have to sort of fax he hasn't got a machine mm-hmm. like a phone uh, a phone machine <laughs> i mm-hmm. mean like an answering <laughs> what is it called right. again he hasn't got a phone answering machine but yeah he's like the hard guy to get a hold of and if he wants to do your movie you you have to fax the offer to him because he has no agent just represents himself and shows up mm-hmm. And you know what's another interesting? And I will. When you read about all these movies, say at TIFF or movies coming out, you've really got to look closely to see. You know, is it a theater? Is it on? Yeah. Is it on a service? You know what I mean? Because I think this Bing the Great Dane. I think this is a movie. It's a movie theater release. I don't think it's a like a streaming release. You'll have because to they're all on the same level now. It's yeah. What are you saying, Dan? You'll have to do what? You have to wait for it to come out on a streamer. You know they, what? They still they still do partition the, the bigger ones. Well, and, and but they also yeah, do but this. not all of them. Not all of them. Sometimes yeah. they do this. Yeah. They give it a limited mm-hmm. theatrical release for I think for award purposes. Like yeah. there's a there's a big movie again. I wish I could remember the name of it. I read about it when we were gone. That is coming out, and I and I noted that what you said, Fred, that that it's mm-hmm. streaming, but first it's being released in a like in sort of the big cities, you know, Chicago, L.A., New York. And then you think, okay, a movie, Bill Murray about a dog that you know it you know rips at your heartstrings or whatever. Um, I don't need to see that in the theater, right? No. <laughs> so it's not the type of thing where I, oh, I'm going to go see that in the theater because it would be a better experience. I can wait for this. Like you would with Star Wars. No, yes, Fred's no, way. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars. Well, that's that's movie theater stuff, right? Yeah. You're, well, when it when it gets re released, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think the last movie I saw in a movie, like a, a picture show, was actually pretty recently. I just can't remember the name of the movie. I took a new uh, friend. Uh, we went to a movie because you know we're trying to think of th- stuff to do in between, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember the movie. Yeah, I can't remember the last movie I went to at the theater. It was over here in Brampton. Me and Dahl went. I think I liked it. But what drove me crazy is was the sound of people eating. Just oh, yeah. Just aggravated. Just aggravated me that day. Well, All I could hear was, like, <laughs> like people reaching into their popcorn boxes and then chewing it. And I don't know why that particular day that bothered me, but it did. Well, people can be aggravating. <laughs> Oh, uh, owie. Uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is coming out. I think it's is in movie theaters now. Yeah. That'd be a good one to see. The last one I didn't see, but I wanted to, was the uh, Deadpool. The new Deadpool. Uh, Deadpool and I, Yeah, I saw that I in movie theater. I saw, I saw that, that one. one. 
Yeah, in fact, I think that's the one we saw. Deadpool 3 with uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. Was it good? Yeah, it was, you know, yeah, pretty good. They do a good movie. Michael Keaton, as I mentioned to you before we started recording, is being interviewed by the Smartless guys. And it was one of the best Smartless interviews I've heard in a long time. Because Michael Keaton, you forget... What I was saying to Fred Dan is you forget how many great movies he's been in and how diverse a career he's had from like, stay, you know, uh, Mr. Mom to like Night Shift to Beetlejuice, but also Clean and Sober. Um, you know, that 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 movie, the the movie about the newspaper that we, we all like. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, he's great. He's, I know he's, what you he's, mean. Yeah, he's good. Spotlight. In, spotlight. He's good yeah. in a lot of dramatic roles. Mm-hmm. Just amazing this career this guy's had, and they re- and and this this Bad. character, the Beetlejuice character, he's back doing it after like thirty years from. Uh... But anyway, very interesting. Yeah, the smartless guys have made their move to Sirius XM. What was it? A hundred million, three years or something? Just unbelievable. And, and yeah, their uh, debut on um, Sirius was with Howard Stern. A little bit of uh, synergy there. Well, let's talk about this because you and I were trying to figure out because what is the model? First of all, the, the, the podcast is available on a normal uh, platform. Like um, it's on all the normal podcast platforms. I have Amazon Music because of my Amazon Prime membership. So I have it on my phone. I get their episodes a week early. So what is the deal with Sirius? What, they, you said $100 million. To do what? To, to get it one week early? Yeah, Howard, I don't know how it works. Um, obviously, it works somehow, but the serious thing is the same way. If you have Sirius XM, you can now listen to the Howard Stern episode for a week, and the next week, it will be available uh, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. You'll be able to listen to it. So there's something about that one-week exclusivity, plus there's got to be advertising tied to it somehow, obviously. Um, you would think, although Sirius XM is subscription. Um, so here's my question. I wonder if they've given the exclusivity uh-huh. to Sirius and taken it away from Amazon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because the Stern one isn't on Amazon. You're one. right. It isn't. So yeah. that's what it is. They, they've, they've now done the... We, they've done the that's what they're getting paid for is the uh, mm-hmm. and they've got huge numbers like huge isn't it weird that all three of them are making more for this one hour a week podcast mm-hmm. than than yeah. they've ever made on one of their television shows you know Stern made it I listened to uh, most of it last night um, a lot of talking over each other um, but Stern made a good point he said you know he was on terrestrial radio if he was doing a bit he had this thing in his mind. He could hear radios being shut off. And he said when he used to do interviews, he was when he looks back on it, he was rude doing interviews because if he didn't think it was going the way it should, people in his mind were shutting off their radio. So he would say stupid stuff, hoping to keep people tuned in. Yeah. Anyway, very, very interesting. But he said his move to Sirius XM relaxed a lot of that. And it was a good point because it was subscription based in his deal you know, is based on a piece of the pie and all that stuff. He said, I sort of lost that because if people were listening and I got, and they were turn, t- tuning out of my show, they were still tuning into Sirius XM, yeah. which means, which means the subscription base was still there and may even be growing. Um, and I thought that was really interesting way to look at it so it didn't bother him so much if he thought he said i'm going to do this long form interview even if it bores somebody i know they're staying within the family and those subscription dollars are still funneling back to me on some level right did he i've never been it let me just make this quick point did he talk about the idea of podcasting because when we started 13 years ago he mm-hmm. was still on, and I listened to a lot of Stern, as you did. He was still yes. on about how, you know, what are all these podcasters doing? And they, none of them deserve anything. And podcasts are stupid. And you have to get an audience on terrestrial radio, blah, blah, blah. You're not a broadcaster. Did he address he any still, of that? He, well, he still sort of calls it radio um, podcasting, which I find... <laughs> Anyway, he tells a story on that point. He tells a story because he and Jason Bateman have been longtime friends. And he said, when Smartless first started, he was talking to Bateman one day. 
and Bateman said, "Oh yeah, me and Will and Sean, you know, we're gonna ju- we we have this goofy little thing. We just I sit in the basement, we talk to each other and make each other laugh. That's how it started. Yeah. We're just they didn't really have you know the end result in mind. Of course not. Yeah. And then Stern, you know, goes into his rap about how bitter he is about that how people that there's no training in radio yeah, yeah. nobody i spent 50 years in this business and <laughs> how many years i didn't make a cent you guys sit in your basement now you're worth millions <laughs> so from that standpoint he addresses it but he seems to have softened on the concept now well i want to i want to respond why to that. not i want to but dan go ahead and make your point i'll come back to what fred said well i just i've never been a subscriber to uh to serious but what what would it be like? Do they have their own channel and they just repeat the the same show? No, on the, on the every, app. Every day? Well, are are they on a channel, Fred, or are they just on the app? Yeah, they would just yeah, just on the app because it's not live, right? Yeah, yeah. So no, it's just it's as a. Uh, I just searched it this morning. I have the app because I can't. Yeah. I don't have Sirius in my car anymore because of the oh. Tesla. So, so I it's wanted an to say, thing. yeah, it's on demand thing. So what, what I want to say about that, and I had this conversation with somebody recently too about how podcasts change the requirements f- for and I, and and we went through a little bit of that thinking you know listen we have all this the three of us have been in radio you know a hundred years between us and somebody comes along and can just kind of plug in a, a, a cheap microphone mm-hmm. and have a podcast but that's kind of the genius of it all for me is that if you have content that somebody wants it doesn't matter anymore like it did when we were younger that you have you know, chops or pipes or you have a radio voice. It, it None of it matters. Even the way they do interviews, haphazard. And they, as you say, sometimes I'll listen to somebody on smart list and it gets aggravating because that person doesn't get a chance to talk, which is why I like the Michael Keaton one, because he right. did most of the talking. Yeah, like the Stern one. Was, it's just so disjointed. Like, they ask one question and Stern answer it, and you're begging for the follow-up question, and then one of the other guys asks a question, like, totally at the left field, and it's like, what? Like, But that's fine. They're making millions off it. But the problem with, not the problem, but where we're at with podcasting, and I don't know if anybody saw this coming, but the only people making money off it yeah. are stars. I mean, there's even podcasts. I was reading about this last week. There are podcasts, really, with hundreds of thousands of downloads in a month, and those people aren't making any money. You know, I mean, they're making some, and like they're making a nice, you know, middle income income, yeah. but they're not making Jason Bateman and, and no, uh, Smartless money. So they're throwing millions at these people with names, and again, the product probably isn't nearly as good as a lot of people that are making no money are delivering, if you follow what I'm I'll tell saying. you, there's a whole category of yeah. podcasts that I'm sure you, or you're you aware, or you'd be aware of, but don't mm-hmm. listen to, and that's the, all those sports podcasts. In my case, you know, there's a couple of big name golf podcasts from guys that aren't right. broadcasters, but they've made, they're making a ton of money because they not only have millions of listeners, but they have merchandise surrounding yeah. it. They're, they're like, a, there's mm-hmm. a, there's one called no laying up and the other one's called the par train. And there's a couple like that where, you know, they're, they're they've made an industry out of their podcast. Mm-hmm. And, and how does your podcast where does it fit into your business model? Like, you know, is the podcast supporting the merchandise sale or this merchandise sale supporting the podcast? You know, it's, it's, um, again, again, the way it's unfolding, like I read, we, we've been talking about the colleges lately and they're dropping a lot of radio courses. And I read somewhere, one of these Ontario colleges, now you go and it's about podcasting. Well, again, that's just as useless as radio. Yeah. Because you're not going to emerge from a podcasting course and make a living. You're Without a name, you're not. You're just not. Um, it's just too competitive. It's too, the access is way too easy. Well, yeah. How, how do you, how do you get your head above the, the, the crowd, you know? You know, and 13 years ago, you know, this month, a month before we launched our very first podcast, not the first one we ever did, but when we launched this iteration of it, I know that you and I were doing it because we had really no other options and we thought it would be a great project and, but really was 
to kind of get our name back out. We hadn't done a, a show together for mm-hmm. in, in 2011. It had been six years since we'd, you know, done the Humble and Fred show. We'd done a few podcasts, but we did it with an, with an eye to reintroduce our franchise and hopefully get mm-hmm. a, a radio gig. I could never have imagined, I can't speak for you, but I could never have imagined that 13 years later, we'd be making money doing this thing and having the, you know, having a great time doing it and the way the show has changed. Right. But we, again, you know, for what it's worth, we had a brand. It would somebody, oh, I know that. Mm -hmm. I liked that. And again, that was the key to us surviving in this environment. Um, Again, you know, I Sunday I had lunch with somebody that worked at CFNY years and years ago, and again she was aware we were doing something, but not quite sure. And oh yeah, I love those. And I thought that's that's interesting. <laughs> There's that word again. <laughs> and again, I not that you get well, you wouldn't get sad or upset. You're just sort of disappointed because it's you think oh, given the history of being around us and stuff you would think maybe at some point but you know people have busy lives and different interests they they just don't and it just shows the machinery that you have to have around something like this is so important well and think about the advantages we had yeah we had the first weekend the weekend we did the and we've told this story but but here's a couple of advantages the toronto star I had the cover of the entertainment section the weekend before we launched was mm-hmm. us. We at one point had an, an entire satellite network around us. They did shit yes. for us, but at least we had it there. The machinery around us should have given us a much bigger uh, footprint. Yes. It didn't because it's Canada and we don't give a shit here, but mm-hmm. you know, if we had That's been humble sure. and Fred in Chicago, New York, LA, some other big American city and then did this. Yeah. Our, our financial model would be a lot different. Yeah. Uh, I say <laughs> we would, Dan, you know what? We would have yep. been able to afford to buy you all the things that you love, Dan, all the, things. all the things we would have, wow. you know, what we would have done for Christmas one year. We would have given you the entire star Wars franchise on bus. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we would have bought you all sorts of things, Dan. Oh, that would have been great. Instead of I once uh, bought, you know, what we're doing I once here. bought Howard the um the, That's right. the, the um uh, Godfather um, trilogy. Uh, trilogy? Yes, you did. And I was into those too. Yeah, I guess it's just the sci-fi slant stuff that's never really impacted me. You gave that to me and I was one of my I still have it somewhere, but it was one of the it was the first box set I I owned was the one that you gave me. But, Dan, I tell you, we would have taken care of you in your old age, but unfortunately, this is our model. <laughs> and you're destitute. So it's a, a different timeline, yeah. I oh, got yeah. It. Let yeah. me uh, get rid of this. And uh, we're going to have Dan come back and do the news. Of course, we've got Nick Inus today, Dan. So you're going to have to fit yourself in around that. And uh, Ralph and Mergy will be joining us shortly. This is uh, the Tuesday show. Oh, at some point we should talk about my uh, enormous elbow. Uh, but yes. first, uh, Freddie, let's talk about these fine folkies. All right, the Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan Canada's number one group benefits plan for small business. Uh, say you wake up one morning, you're part of the Chamber Plan, and you wake up one morning and you have this huge elbow. Yeah. Like water on the elbow or something. <laughs> That's right. And you look and you're aghast. I have a golf tournament today, and my elbow is five times the size it should be. Well, you could, you know what you could do? You could phone the Teladoc system. You could phone the Teladoc system, and they would put you in touch with someone that could help you with that specific problem. Just one of the many, yeah. just one of the many services offered by the Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan Canada's, as I say, number one group benefits plan for small business. Go there today, get a free quote. You know, we're talking prescriptions and dental, all the things you would expect from a plan, some therapy, some travel insurance. But again, they have the Teladoc system. I have used it, and I have been channeled directly to the person that could help me with my specific problem. Oh, yeah. And I have a few. And I have a few. Do you? Yes. (laughs) 
So again, uh, and you know, they have an HR component too, which is, listen, an add-on that works so well for small business when you can't afford to have an HR department. Anyway, go to chamberplan.ca today and get a free quote. Well, let me tell you, my friend, we're excited to be at Kelsey's once again on September 25th. And if you want to be part of it, Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com is how you enter. And uh, all who enters will be welcome. And at any uh, at any rate, let me tell you about Kelsey's. They love happy hours so much. How much do they love it, Howard? Well, they celebrated twice a day. $5 draft, beer, wine, and mixed drinks. What? And $10, $10 appies. You know, appies is short for appetizers. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. $10 appies every day from 3 to 5 and 8 to close. Only at Kelsey's because they love happy hour and they are the original roadhouse. Must be legal drinking age. And of course, I've told you before, I'll tell you again, they got wing nights a couple nights a week. Wednesdays, Thursdays, half price wings. What? Visit Kelsey's.ca or... Your local Kelsey's for details, yes. Let me break in here with a Kelsey's report. Uh, here's Fred to embellish, <laughs> Just to embellish what you said. Let me introduce you properly. Here's ref breaking, breaking Kelsey's news. Here's Fred Patterson. We haven't had a show since, but last Wednesday, uh, my daughter and her husband uh, went down to the Jays game. It was their anniversary, uh, you know, so they went out and Jays game dinner and all, all that stuff. So we mm-hmm. looked after the kids, May and John. And then we thought, let's take them out for dinner. And in Georgetown, there is a Kelsey's. I thought, let's go to Kelsey's. I want to go to Kelsey's because, you know, they've, they're a sponsor again, and it's the least I can do, and we'll, we'll try it out. And I'll tell you, it was a fantastic experience at the Kelsey's in Georgetown. I had the um, buffalo um, chicken sandwich. Nice. I'm telling you, it was outstanding. It was, out, it was thick and juicy. So good. And uh, Johnny, Johnny Slapshot had the ultimate burger, which was like two patties. He could hardly get his mouth around it. Come on. And absolutely. Lo- yeah, it was fantastic. Doll had the beet and goat cheese salad, of course, with with chicken. She loved it. I'm not kidding. It was really, really a good experience. This, re- this, this beer, Kelsey's this- report. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I had this beer, too, called like Lawnmower, Lawnmower um, Lager. It was good. And uh, just to cap it all off, uh, sweet little May uh, ordered off the uh, children's menu and had the macaroni and cheese with bacon bits and loved it as well. Yeah, I love that. Well, listen, thank you. I was there. Fred Patterson, uh, appreciate okay. your reports. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for more infor- information, sorry, go to Kelsey's.ca or do what Fred did. Visit your local Kelsey's for details. Now let's get our uh, friend uh, Ralph uh, Ben Murray. Bruce. Let's get <laughs> let's get Bruce Ben let's, Bruce. let's tell him you call. <laughs> I, I'm going to start by telling him that you confused him. I know that you confused he'll, he'll him. Oh no, he's going to be appalled. I'm appalled. I'm appalled by your uh, insolence. Uh. Um, yeah, but uh, half an hour ago I said, uh, yeah, Ralph Ben Murray is going to be on our program, and then a couple seconds later he called you Bruce. And I said, Bruce, he said, yeah, go ahead. You tell him. You know what? I'm so ashamed. You tell him. Because you're two like, two guys that I watched on the CBC years ago. Bruce Dobigan, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah and I yeah. was just thinking Bruce Dobigan when I'm thinking Ralph Ben Murray. And honestly, I've done that before. But we made the point. You two couldn't be any farther apart in your view of life. That's true. Bruce. That's yeah, because Bruce has become, um, I don't know. He lives on a different planet now. Recording in progress. You know. I got a weird request just a second ago from you, Ralph, to record this podcast for some reason. I'm happy. Oh, yeah. To ignore that. Ignore oh, I, that. Well. It's just mm-hmm. annoying otter app that I tried to kill, and it just, it's a zombie. It's so can I, can I, I, can I get rid of that one? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask to remove. I'm removing that. Okay. Ralph Ben Murray's here. And it's always recording. A... Stop. Okay, fine. <laughs> God damn it! You know, Ralph, I, I love I love you, but every time you're on, there's always some kind of technical mishigas, as we say. Ralph is uh, the author. It's a of... dibic. Pardon me. <laughs> it's a dibic. Uh, Ralph is the uh, a, a, a mischief maker. Uh, I see. Uh, Ralph is the author of uh, his most recent book is called "I Thought He Was Dead." He's a spiritual guide, a guide, and a leader. 
And uh, also, I found out recently, the host of a program called Spark. And oh, they, yeah. They've done... Uh, they, so the premise of the show is basically what? Well, you find people who have a spark, and you spend half an hour with them one-on-one, and uh, that's the premise of the show. So after six seasons... They yes. were uh, rummaging around in the bottom of a box, and they said, "Listen, we're out. We're completely. <laughs> we have completely run out of guest ideas, and uh, somehow or well, another." Okay, but to be fair, every year somebody would say, "What about uh, Howard or Fred?" And I go, "Not now." <laughs> we're not. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. We're, not yet. No. I think uh-huh. the the production meeting was we're not that desperate yet, <laughs> and uh, so I was uh, honored. Uh, surprised and honored to be part of your program and uh, had a showed up on a Sunday morning at a, a home in Hamilton. It was really quite a great experience, a great crew, just a lovely group of people. And as always, our conversations are enjoyable for me. I don't know if they're enjoyable for others, but I certainly <laughs> I certainly well, like to I'm, our I'm conversations. Gonna have fr- the next batch, I will have Fred on, but he's ah. gonna call. Me, he's got to call me Bruce through the whole thing. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, well, you I, know what I usually get. What I usually get is Frank. Frank. Almost, yes, almost every time somebody gets my name wrong, it's either Ben. Yes. Or Frank. Really? Yeah. So I must have been Frank in another life. So I have no idea what's going on there. So just to close off the uh, conversation about the show, when when will the sparkless interview with Howard uh, uh, air? in uh, uh, somewhere January or February? Okay. Next wow. Show. All right. Well. Yeah. We'll have you is back this like on. a pod? Is this a podcast or like no? No, a- it's a, it's a, a, a show on uh, Yes TV, which is only seen in Ontario and Alberta. Oh yeah, and, right. And mm-hmm. it's mostly Christian stuff, but they mm-hmm. need right. they need somebody who isn't a Christian once in a while, so they you know pick Mister Jew Jew over here. <laughs> That's right. right. So yeah, we went there. Um, remember Howard? We went. What was it called at the time? Uh, cross. Yeah. Well, we actually you know, the, went to their studios. The big yeah. facility there, yeah. I think it's near Burlington. Yeah. Like that big yeah. building and yeah, something ministry. Crossroads. That's yeah. right. Crossroads. And, yeah. and it was yes. for the uh, Drew Marshall show at the time. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. I right. think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I enjoyed it and uh, the crew was great and I I've uh I look forward to it and we'll have you back on and see if we can, you know, let people go and watch our little chat. Um you know, the tonight is a big night. We haven't mentioned it yet on the yet on the show. Mm. And I wanted to sort of wait for you. Just your thoughts on uh, a couple things. Obviously, tonight the debate between uh, the vice president and the creature, the orange creature. What are your thoughts about this? And uh, not that you have any. <laughs> <laughs> I have no bias. I have no bias I about bias. it. Uh, I call everyone a creature. Really. <laughs> the orange creature. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had a hat. Um, well, it's a complicated thing uh, because, um, you know, I was thinking about this yesterday. Like, why are, like, how is this even a close race? Yes. Like, how in, on earth could people actually think that this man who is every day proves to people he's not well, he's dangerous, he's cavalier, he's misogynist, he's racist, uh, you know, he has... Nazis uh, out to Mar-a-Lago and nobody flinches, like literally Nazis. Uh, and I, I, I realized that I, I saw this montage of Christian nationalist um, podcasters and broadcasters who, when you put it all together, it's the most frightening image. It reminds me of that movie that came out uh, recently, Civil War. Mm. You know, you, well, we're Americans. We'll kind of American are you and then he proceeds to kill people Uh, and and I realized that there's this make America great again is make America Christian nationalist uh, now as it was before uh, that superiority piece so those people are the people who you can't move them off of Trump they they will say rationalize anything because what they really want is a social cultural uh, revolution to the past. And that, that's why Harris ends up with, we're not going back. We're not going back. Um, to try to tell people, we got, America's got to move forward. But 
he doesn't there's nothing about what he could do tonight that anyone could script because he he's completely scatological and if you read transcripts of things he says at press conferences i just read them don't listen to them you'd think what on earth is this Mm -hmm. it makes no sense whatsoever and so tonight everyone's saying she's going to just wipe the floor with him but the problem with that is which floor where's the floor how do i wipe this floor because he's so confusing a creature and he has this uncanny ability to hold on to people for the ugliest possible reasons. So I'm hoping that what happens is Kamala Harris has to now pivot from the joy campaign to the trust me campaign uh, because people still in polling, people still actually believe that he's He's the uh, the person who's best suited to, to for the economy. Just quickly, because you said so many things that Fred and I have uh, we agree with and and have sort of discussed on the show. Starting in whatever order, the fact that it's even close is remarkable. It's it, it, it's and I've said this to you um, when we've discussed it. You know, there was a time when you would say any of the things that Trump has said, and that would be the end of your yeah. yeah. But what I don't understand, and maybe Fred can comment on this too. The, the not the sanitization of Trump, but the way the mainstream media, New York Times at all, make it seem like he's almost normal. Yeah. Well, that's the 50-50 thing, right? 98% of scientists say climate change is uh, human manufactured and here. And yet when they do reports you got to get the one, you know, the 2% person to be 50% of the conversation to appear that uh, that you're giving equal time to, a, to an argument when sometimes there is no equal time. It's just a bad idea. Well, what Howard just said, too, this is what frightens me more than anything else. He is so powerful now that, you know, a lot of these um, billionaires have sided with him. And a lot of the media, I've heard this theory, too, a lot of the media, you say, like the New York Times, they're so afraid that he's going to win. They have want to stay on the right side of him or he'll go after them. And that could really hurt them business wise. So, again, it's money over country. It's character. It's, uh, you know, um, self-interest again over mm. over country and 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 I find that really frightening that people are now making decisions based on the fact that boy, if he's elected, he could come after us if we're on the wrong side of him. I mean, that's Russia shit. That's Putin shit. Yeah, well, he's already and that said, could happen. Yeah, he's already said I'm going to go after people. Yeah, yeah. but but in light of all that, you do have an entire movement of Republicans who are openly saying I'm voting for Kamala Harris. I can't Mm -hmm. abide this. Mm -hmm. But the other problem that we have, you just mentioned it, Fred, is you can have either oligarchy, like billionaire Mm -hmm. running the world, or democracy. You can't have both. Right. And America, because of Citizens United, which which passed years ago, is flooded with cash in politics. Uh, If you're a senator, 100 days a a year, you have to raise money. So it's about having the backing of millions. Now, I would say Kamala Harris has managed to raise enormous amounts of money under $200 donations and triple the amount of money that Trump is bringing in. So it's all going to end up on if you work in politics, this is a GOTV campaign, get out the vote campaign. You have to identify your vote. You have to make sure they get out. You have to do early voting. And by doing all that, you've got the best chance to win. Obama did it twice. So hopefully the same machines. Are and, and without getting too complicated, because and mm-hmm. Freddie and I were talking about this before the show started about. Well, we didn't mention this. He's never won the popular vote. But in 2016, yeah. the Electoral College map, math worked in his favor. In 2020, it worked in it Biden's... Almost it almost didn't. It almost didn't go through. The problem mm-hmm. with it is now is, like, she got this big spike in poll popularity. And as a guy who's worked in politics, Ralph, explain... I, and now it's kind of some of the bloom is off the rose. It's a statistical tie. And as you said to me, mm-hmm. Freddie... And the mm-hmm. Electoral College math is more in his favor still. Uh, electoral College in the United States favors Republicans. 
um, the Senate favors Republicans because if you have red states that are this big, little small thing, and yeah. they still get two senators. So you get that. Yeah. But you also get the Electoral College is completely weighted to the advantage of um, the white Christian uh, majority of the United States. Uh, this was The Electoral College was devised in the era of slavery. And that's where it sits today. It's not mm-hmm. much different. So th- that game is rigged, but you can still win. Like right now, those polls we see, ignore national polls. They're irrelevant. Uh, there are polls within certain states, period. And they're the ones that are going to matter. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Minnesota's lost to Trump now. Uh, Michigan, Michigan. lost to him. Uh, Wisconsin looks like a... Austin, but Pennsylvania isn't, and Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia, and North Carolina are still in the game. Well, why do you say they're but lost? Is remember, they, 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 the, the polling Trump numbers? Trump is out. Yeah, the polling numbers are, are, are too high and trending too high for Harris. But oh, I see. Okay. The other, the other states, what you have there is before with Biden, the Democrats were behind. Now, in some of those states, they're in, they're in a dead heat. Yeah. So that means she is making progress. After this debate, people will decide they, they'll they get to know her. Because the problem is a lot of people still feel like, I don't know who she is. You know mm-hmm. who the maniac is. But he's not getting half the attention he used to get. Mm-hmm. Like, no, speeches no. Yeah. are being cut off by Fox News. They're just like, he's looking so bad, we can't keep doing this. No, I know. Like even the Democratic convention when Adam Kins- Kinzinger did his speech, the Republican who's turned on Trump, they didn't show it on Fox. Right. You well, know, Fox like, is out of control. I mean, well, Fox it, is it, out of control. Bad. And it's it's interesting what you say, too. If you go to the Fox News site and you read the comments, there's rational people on there that put arguments against Trump up there against Trump. You know, spelling it out, like what he's done and why he shouldn't be elected. And it's just these blind followers. They won't take any of it. They just say, oh, you're a liar. Uh, you know, you you watch too much CNN. It's or fake news. It's all you're fake news. You're too much of a lefty, which gets back to another thing that Howard and I were talking about. This evil brilliance of Trump and the people around him. Like yesterday, they released that story that migrants in Ohio are stealing dogs and eating them. <laughs> Isn't that great, though? And that was started by J.D. Vance. And the thing is, even almost immediately, the de- police department in that area issued a, a thing saying, no dogs have gone missing in this area. There's been no reports of them being eaten. <laughs> but they know when they throw that stuff out there, Trump people want that to be true. They want that to be true, that migrants are doing that, so they'll believe it. Well, but there's a social hysteria that you look the Mm -hmm. underlying all of this discontent is a broken social contract that America's dream is no longer a dream for many people that Mm -hmm. they showed a chart of the disparity in wealth for a CEO and a worker. We, Canada, were in the middle of that at about 20 to one. The everybody was about 20, maybe 30 to one for the prey of a CEO to a a worker. Mm -hmm. The United States, 475 to one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, right. That's how far gone it's become. And by the way, I think it's important here in Canada that we pay a hell of a lot more attention to Mr. Mini-Me, which is Pierre Polyev. He's now mm-hmm. got, uh, you know, uh, well, sell out Singh for uh, Jagmeet Singh. Mm-hmm. He, he's doing the same playbook. He he attacks the media when they ask him questions. He questions their ability to ask. The, the, the fake news is what he's basically saying. He's mimicking the same fake populism that we're seeing down there. And now we have to start. And, doing and you can sort, but you can you can when it's so successful, you can sort of understand why. I'm reading this book right now. Uh, called uh, Misbelief. It's by a sociologist. And and it really is, th- this is the question I'm going to ask both of you, but it really does address the why. Why are mm-hmm. we here and why are those people in those red states, which we love to mock? It's I think a question needs to be asked, what makes them and what made them Right, ripe for the picking to to follow this kind of populism, and I think we we would be able to ask the same question about people in Canada. What what is attractive about these leaders? Fear of the future. 
The future is uncertain. Uh, AI, climate change, existential threats are around us. We don't articulate that. We live with an anxiety that this isn't going to be going well. It's an overall and, uh, malaise in society, an overall stress in society. It's just, well, look, people are uh, isolated. Communities uh, don't stick together. People don't have something to rally around that's positive. And if you don't give them something positive, they'll, they'll settle for something negative. And you then need a simple answer to a complex set of questions and someone to blame. The anti-Semitism going on right now, someone to blame. The, th- this guy, nine years ago, comes down the golden escalator and says that Mexicans are rapists and drug yes, de- yeah. uh, dealers. And nobody flinched. <laughs> like, that uh-huh. should have been right there. Like, wait a minute. What are you, what are you Mussolini? Well, and that, that's part of it. And it's multifaceted. Because when the guy at the top says those things and it enables the people below him or Joe Average, boy, if he says it, he thinks it. Well, now I can say it. Yeah. I, again, a few weeks ago, I sat with a guy actually within my family who I could tell within minutes he was a, he's a major homophobe and the whole transgender thing drives him nuts. That's why he likes Trump. Somewhere within that, he thinks that that movement is going to squash. All these gay people are going to go away and this transgender thing will be outlawed. And that's why he likes Trump. And that's his issue. But there's there's a million other issues, ugly issues, because what Trump has done, he's enabled the underbelly of that country. And that's another thing. Yeah, that I, I, find say, so Fred, di- I find so disappointing is the fact that half that country is ugly. It's been exposed. But what you're, saying, sad is but that? What you're saying about that particular person, and I yeah. say in general, is that Trump, Mm -hmm. like the the bottom used to be Mexicans are rapists and murderers, and that Mm -hmm. would be the end of that candidate. But what Mm -hmm. Trump has done, to your point about that guy's issues, is given him a sort of a buffet of of vitriol and hate for people to identify with. It also is a it's an avalanche. So it used to be um, somebody would do something that was not good in a presidential election or any election and that was the end of them but when you do something like that every single day yes when you mm-hmm. say something every yeah. single day then it, you can't actually hold on to it you can't grab it and go oh th- that's horrible because the next thing is like oh and now we said that and now we said that yeah I agree. so by doing that he scatter guns the uh, the ridiculousness but it works for some people and it doesn't work for others the only thing you can hope is that the democrats can actually energize people to to vote who don't usually vote yeah. you always have who you know is going to vote for you it's a question of getting those people who are independents or moderates and and they have to go okay we'll we'll do this and any little trick for the democrats unfortunately anything that w- would be untoward would become a huge thing because it's only one thing yeah here's another problem we have elon musk in control yeah. of x or twitter i read yesterday there's about 10 things that he's posted or allowed to go on there that he knows if you sat elon musk down he knows that that's inaccurate not true just vicious pro-Trump crap, and he's allowing that to happen. Now, this is a guy that, up until, you know, his association with Trump, he was admired, you know, as this big businessman. He was a forward thinker. He was very adventurous. He was creative. Now you have this guy in charge of this huge social media platform allowing, knowing, allowing this crap to go out there. Well, there's a a stream of politics, uh, which is corporatism. Uh, What you want is to mimic the corporate world. Now, think about the corporate world. It's fundamentally, uh, stay with me on this, fundamentally a fascist structure. You have the the boss, and the Mm -hmm. boss says, you're fired, or you're hired. So that's all top down. There's no consensual way to create uh, the culture. It's always top down and it's always uh, precarious for the worker. Right. You, so these guys truly believe that that's the best way to do things because look at the success they've had. And Elon Musk is a classic example of that sort of thing. But they believe in this stuff. They also, by the way, have 
really sophisticated bunkers underneath their homes to make sure mm. that they can hide when the shit hits the fan. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they, Trump said that he was going to name Elon Musk uh, something. Yeah. Minister. He's going to wash it. He's going to wash out the bureaucracy and put in the people. Trump right. But, but he's basically but, but the, the, the title was something like, you know, uh, going to make sure things run, you know, things run better. I'm not sure if this was Oberman or not, but when he took over Twitter, it was worth forty five billion dollars. It's now worth twelve. So that's right. the guy you want in charge of uh, making sure well, things run Trump. better. Oh, I look know. Look at Trump. He's supposed to be the successful businessman. He's a disaster. And yeah, but none of that, bankruptcies. Yeah, but none of that make like that's what you said when you said it's sort of a scatter gun or a shotgun blast yeah, of yeah. nonsense all the time. None of it matters. The indictments, the uh, adjudicated mm-hmm. rapist, the women that have come forward and talked. I mean, none of it matters anymore. But before we wrap up, I want to get to this last thing. So, what is the best case outcome for Kamala Harris tonight? That Trump People, fucks up. <clears throat> no, th- this is the same thing that worked for the second George Bush. Junior, uh, I like the guy. I could have a beer with the guy. If literally in politics, if you feel like I could have that person over, I like them. That is a huge advantage. So if people get to know her tonight who don't know her, uh, because when you're the vice president, you might as well just be living in another country. The president <laughs> is like, you go sit over there, and I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the way that works. But in this case, if they feel like they are warmer to her and they like her, uh, it's not going to be because she's a great prosecutor that people are going to decide to vote for her, because those who don't want to vote for her won't vote for her because they are Trumpites. And that's just that. So I think if she can come out of this, having told her story, she's going to use uh, my guess having done debate prep with politicians, she's going to use the personal story approach. Mm. You know, when I was seven years old, I encountered this. When I, you know, yes. uh, you know, right, I have a stepdaughter and uh, she did this and all that sort of stuff. So that's, I think, going to be the biggest difference is that people will feel like they know her. Then they'll feel comfortable going, OK, I really wasn't going to vote at all. I'll vote for her. Two points. Just before we go, number one, MSNBC has already decided she won the debate. Fox has yeah. already decided he's won the debate. Yeah. So, again, I think we'll have to look at CNN or maybe some of the Canadian channels to get the analysis fair analysis. And I know a lot of people shit all over CNN. But really, when it comes to those three, they're probably most in the middle. And back to Canada quickly. You know, this is scary, too, with Poliev because... Trudeau is so disliked in the country right now, and people have had they've had enough of the liberals, and it's time to move on. The timing couldn't be better for polio. So everybody better pay attention. But people don't pay attention. They don't. It'll be time for a change, and they'll just vote conservative. Well, the, yes, because we also live in a culture of uh, new and improved, an advertising culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't you don't do something because it's substantial and important. You do it because you're bored and tired and want something new. Yep. And Polyev is, is something new. But I would say that the uh, fuck Trudeau stuff is mm-hmm. just, I, I don't understand it. I get if you don't like certain things, yeah. but... That's another one but of that's those a, channels of That's hate. mimicking, but that's politics in Canada mimicking, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you know, aping yeah, the yeah. Uh, Americans. And <coughs> But I, I've said this to you, Freddie. I mean, but 10 years ten, is ten, enough. Though. I know, 10 years ago when Trudeau yeah. got in, it was this something, you know, new and shiny. And, you know, whether it was Polyev, so, but whether it was Polyev or somebody else conservative, they, some, mm-hmm. a conservative was probably going to get elected this time. Right. Okay. Okay. Remember, though, <clears throat> Trudeau has beaten three different conservative leaders and underestimated every time. Uh, the other thing is, what if they get a new leader? Would you then think, oh, it's new and improved? Yes. I've got- yes. Yeah, probably. Okay. Well, then that, mm-hmm. that's the issue for, mm-hmm. for Trudeau. It is. Well, here's it the is. thing. Like, like athletes, you don't know when to leave the game. It, right? it, well, that's and, and who's worse at that than politi- politicians? Mm-hmm. You know, just look at the uh, Senate. Well, and us. Yeah, and us. And, us. and well, yeah, the three of us, three <laughs> hundred year old, old young. White men. Hey, listen, we're excited to see you in person on the 25th at Kelsey's in Burlington. Ralph will be helping us celebrate the end of summer and our 13th anniversary of this ridiculous podcast that we've been doing since 2011. And it will be our, uh, it'll be beshared to have you uh, sitting with us in front of a crowd. 
Uh, where's the catering coming from? What are we serving? At Kelsey's. You want to have Wins? <laughs> you want, oh, they don't have Blintz's at Kelsey's. Well, I'll tell you what. I, mm. Now that you've said that, I'm going to bring you a little uh, Blintz. A little Blintz and a schmear. A little schmear. <laughs> Listen, Ralph Ben Murgy wants you to know that he's available for all your dining and dancing pleasure. And uh, his latest book is called I Thought He Was Dead. Ralph, uh, good seeing you, my friend. RalphAmergy.ca. Take care of yourselves, guys. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Ralph. Peace, my brother. Peace. There he is. Bum, 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 bum. You know what else? Uh, we we were in a pretty we were in a pretty grown up meeting, you and I last week or whenever that was, and there was some talk, grown up talk with the people from Kelsey's. You know, marketing people and you know people that have real jobs that have to wear pants to work every day. And there is a chance we're working on a chance for everybody who comes to Kelsey's that day to give a shot, to have a sampling of Humble and Fred's interesting all-Canadian ale. And I want you to know it's still available. It's Stonehooker. Have you gotten down to Stonehooker yet? You should. Everyone's talking about it. They built this beer, Humble and Fred's, interesting all-Canadian ale, uh, from the ground up with Canadian malt, hops, and yeast. A clean, refreshing beer. At an inflation-fighting price. Good friend of mine, Frederick Patterson, tells me that the beer is excellent and refreshing. And if you're looking for a year-round, easy-drinking, thirst-quencher, something so interesting, so crushable, go down to Stonehooker. It is uh, 5% off for a 12-pack, 10% off for a 2-4. So 10% off uh, 69 bucks comes to 62.10, or just 259 per can. All right. Mm-hmm. Stonehooker's available on the Lakeshore, 866 Lakeshore. Uh, I guess that's east. And you can find out more at stonehooker.com. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, the world of sports, Howard. Last night, um, Aaron Rodgers, the anti vaxxer. Uh, made really his debut at the New York Jets because last year he was uh, injured like uh, played four first plays play of the game yeah four plays stupid so they lost and I'm happy to report that because I just want nothing but the worst for the New York Jets this Excellent. year because of Aaron Rodgers Myself, I'm sorry but yeah. that's just the way I feel I feel the same way too. Uh, whether you're a sports better, a horse racing fan, a poker, a casino player, Bodog, your number one source of online gambling entertainment from their industry leading odds, world class sports book to their fully loaded casino and race book. They've been providing Canadian players with an unparalleled gaming experience since 1994. Uh, your Buffalo Bills, the Thursday night game. What's today? Tuesday? Yeah, the Thursday night game in Miami. The Bills, the underdog. Oh, yeah. Dolphins minus 130 on the money line. Uh, they're a two point pick over the. Uh, Buffalo Bills, who uh, really? came back from a 17-3 deficit on Sunday. Yeah, I saw that beat, game. Uh, Arizona. That was weird for me when I asked you this morning, did you watch the Bills game? And you said, no, I was at a brunch. And mm-hmm. I said, well, I watched the whole thing. And I was like, huh, huh. Because normally it would be, I would be at a fancy downtown brunch and you'd be on your couch. But no, I watched that whole game. I almost, mm-hmm. uh, I didn't want to start this early in the season messaging you. Like, where's Josh Allen? Is he not playing today? You know, those kind of things I like to say. Mm-hmm. And then Josh Allen did uh, what the kids like to say. He did Josh, Josh Allen things and mm-hmm. uh, came back and uh, they won. Although it was closer than it should have been. Speaking of Miami, I wanted to bring that up briefly before uh, we get a uh, chance to talk to Nick Ines. I'm not sure if you've, I'm sure you've heard the story of Tyreek yeah. Hill and the arrest of another black man. The um, I watched uh, Sweet Caitlin Collins last night interview Tyreek. Just a nice fellow, very simple fellow. Mm-hmm. Tyreek and his lawyer. I'm sure most people know by now that he, he was taken out of his car forcibly, stopped at a. I don't know why he was stopped. I still don't know. Do you know why he was stopped? Some traffic issue or something. Some traffic issue. He literally stopped like. A kilometer or less away from the player's entrance of the Miami Dolphins on Sunday when he was going to play football. Anyway, as you can imagine, he was being roughed up and treated like an asshole by these fucking cops they have down there. And uh, the whatever Broward County Police Department have said, oh, no, it was all perfectly 
perfectly normal. He was, you know, being uh, resistant and whatever, but he wasn't. He was just being a simple man trying to figure out why he was being thrown around for driving a fancy car. Just, I just, it was I sort of like, was it Scotty Scheffler went through the same thing? Yes, Scotty Scheffler, a white man, went through the same thing, but he was not mm-hmm. treated the same way. Right. No, th- three different cops threw this guy around. It was just disgusting. So, yes, and there's a guy on um, Overdrive TSN in the afternoon. Oh, I forget his name. A Canadian kid played in the NFL for Seattle and a couple of teams. He told the story yesterday that he finds that so bewildering because it was a home game and all the players are given a certain route to drive into the stadium. Yeah. And he said, you know, and he this player's been around for a while. So he said it's odd because not only do you get to know the route and the cops, they get to know you and you get to know them usually because, you know, it's paid duty and it's usually the same guys on the route on your way to the stadium. And he said he found it fascinating that he wasn't recognized, you know, that they just jump to conclusions and it gets back to the maybe well, the racial thing you're talking about. And, and you know, I, I was expecting the when Miami Police Department to say we're really we're embarrassed. We're sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, Mr. Hill was mistreated. Anything that would recognize like, I don't know Tyreek Hill. I, did, I never heard of him until a couple of days ago. Is he a significant player on that team? Yeah, yeah. In fact, he, he got a touchdown that day, like an 80-yard. Yeah, so okay. so yeah. where is the outcry, the out, whatever, the outrage from the citizens of Miami over how this guy was treated? Because he would not have been treated that way. Scotty Shuffler, great point. Scotty Shuffler was... And it was early morning, raining and dark, and they didn't. The guy didn't recognize him, and and this was a one-off thing. It wasn't a route that Scotty Scheffler would have taken every week to go to his a game. And as a white man, you know, he was treated with respect and deference, even mm-hmm. after the cop says, you know, that he tried to run him over, which he didn't. You know, people would accuse me of being hysterical and having Trump derangement sim- syndrome, but do you know how? What he has done to that country on so many levels. You know, all so much of this ugliness comes from what we get back to enabling these people. You know how many police unions across the United States have endorsed Trump? They these police police unions have endorsed a guy with 34 felon, a convicted felon with a sexual abuse rap, and they have endorsed him. No, what I know. does that tell you about the country? Well, I'll give you two. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with partly what you're saying. Yes, he's enabled it. He's made it worse. Let's give it Let's give it that. But mm-hmm. Rodney King goes back a long way. I mean, I, I know. I mean, I know. we're, we're mm-hmm. now just privy to... Uh, body cam footage and people being able to drive by like that was pretty rare back in 93 or so when Rodney King was beaten to a pulp by the L.A. Police Department. That was rare that somebody had the ability to film it. But now we can all film it. And and maybe excuse me, maybe. Yes, I just burped. Maybe you're right that. I'm not disagreeing that Trump makes it worse. And it's also disgusting that all these police uh, Mm -hmm. support him. But I'll just say this. It was always there. We're just seeing more of it because you can sh- you can film it now. Right. And also how dumb these cops are. Like, I watched this video a bunch of times. These fucking cops are just so dumb. They really are. They're not the best and brightest. You know, if you're a smart person, are you, you want to be a cop? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I know. But you think Rodney King was what? How many years ago? Like I say, in the early 90s. All these years later, you'd think we'd be beyond that. But here we are still still dealing with it, even with the phones. I mean, you bring up the phones. You would think that would even make it more unlikely that these things would happen. But they still do. And let me just backtrack. I'm not saying all cops are stupid. I'm not saying that. And you should. That's not true. And I'm not saying that if you're if you're smart, you wouldn't want to be a cop. But a lot of these, f- f- the footage that we see, these particular police men and women hmm. are not the best and brightest. You watch that video, and you can just hear the guy talking, how dumb he is. Well, Howard, the guy running for president is not the best oh, and brightest. He's a so fucking dumb. moron 
pig. And look at this. The guy could be, has a great chance of being the president of the United States. And again, it gets back to the Ralph thing. It's a contest. It's a, yeah. it's actually well, it's, it's actually a contest. What does that fuck Trump? What's it say about the country? Yeah, but wasn't, what's listen, it you and I have said that. We've said that two and a half dozen times. The fact that it's even close is maybe mm-hmm. the most remarkable thing about this. I'll tell you who is smart. It's our friend oh. Nick Ines, the Condo Report. Let me get Nick uh, in the uh, waiting room here. Nick, there's Nick. Look at that, look at that smiling face. Nick Ines, there he is. Fusion Corp Developments. Talking about a bright, bright man with a bright future. And now, the Condo Report. Well, it's about time, guys. You were, you're late. No, no, we're sorry, Nick. Yeah, we don't want to keep you waiting. Hey, you know, Nick is so powerful. Nick is so um, all uh, knowing. I heard Nick was trying to get our. I heard Nick wanted to come with the meet the people because the people love Nick. Trying to get us to move our our uh, Kelsey's thing because Nick can't Can make it that? that night. Can you believe? Can you believe? It? I can't believe we just we scheduled something on a night that you can't make it to meet the people. Well, I wanted to meet the people. What can I say? But yeah, I tried man. to move it while my guy tried to move it, and uh, and it didn't happen. And well, I could have that's been unfortunate. Yeah. yeah, it's unfortunate. I could have been with the legends of radio. That's and, right. Uh, no, I'd rather be with you guys, but I have obligations. Okay. Well, we may do some sort of a Christmas get together, Nick. So we'll look forward to that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be there, and maybe you guys will get a gift. Well, I was thinking. Oh, just you uh, yeah. what kind of gift would Nick Ines Fred, give you? Fred, like a uh, car? Knowing uh, Nick Ines is gi- knowing Nick Ines and having this kind of personal relationship is gift enough. Mm. Well, listen, we're gonna save it for the day. I'm not gonna tell you now. Yeah, but surprise! I'm, but I'm thinking about you guys. So what All can right, I say? If, if you're giving uh, us condos, they've got to be two bedroom. You know, for resale. Well, yeah. Well, we're gonna talk about a condo giveaway today. Oh right? no! Really? Wait a second. Let me introduce you properly. He is the founder and CEO of Fusion Corp Developments, FusionCorp.ca, and author of the bestseller "Building Toronto's Skyline." And now, Very with more, here's Nick Ines. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you guys. What are you talking about, condo giveaway, bro? No, uh, it's not really a condo. I'm going to talk about Fred is going to buy a condo in Orangeville. That's what I hear. So. Yeah, man. Do you? Okay. I'd, I'd have I, a look. I thought you heard it. I thought you were, you've been talking about Orangeville all this time. Oh, right? yeah. He yeah, loves I Orangeville. Fred, buy a condo. Let's get condo. serious, guys. Let's get serious. Serious. Guys. If you Come had on. Fred, Nick, if you had Fred Patterson, if you had Fred Patterson money, you'd have three condos in Orangeville just for fun. Mm-hmm. I might buy the whole top four, you know, for privacy. <laughs> <laughs> you need privacy. You need privacy. That's right. He, we get, all need privacy. Nick, what's yeah. on your mind today? Let's get right to it. Okay, let's get to it. Let's get to it. So we had another uh, first of interest rates. Let's talk about interest yeah. rates. No. We had another rate cut that was on, announced on uh, last Wednesday. It was fantastic. That's what we want to hear. This is the first time we've had three consecutive rate cuts since uh uh, the financial crisis in 2009. More rate cuts are expected later in the year if the economy continues to improve. And uh, this is only going to help the condo market and will open up uh, pockets of Canada housing market to first time home buyers. So we hope this fall we're going to see a little bit of uh, movement in the market. I think uh, the, the there was activity in the summer, of course. But I want to just, this leads me to my announcement, my first announcement of the day. Yes. Get ready. 60 on Broadway. We are proud to announce we got our Tarion Register to approve for the project. Wow. And uh, we're going to be launching very, very soon. So this is really exciting news. More details will come, of course. But I hear Fred... You wanted to buy a condo in Orangeville. Is this is this going to happen? Yeah, you mentioned that already. You did the, you, you, I'll have a look. Yeah, I'll you did that bit. Let's get back to I want to ask so, a serious I want to ask so a serious do I. Okay, well, I'm going to ask a serious question. Okay, what, what, what when you say you've gotten approvals? So mm-hmm. at this like in this I know it's a long long close, but once you get when do people start like Fred uh, start putting in bids to a buy a place? 
Yeah, so what happens, the first step is to get your Tarion approvals. And uh, you have to get you have to be registered with the the HCRA, which is the Home Regulatory Approvals Process. Okay. And and, uh, and that's, you know, usually people are already a, a, a vendor builder with Tarion. So then they go to the next stage. You have to submit your project for approval with Tarion. There could be an interview if you're a first-time uh, developer. And uh, in that process, they're going to review, ask questions, interview you on some technical skills and stuff like that. We're the builders, so there weren't too many technical questions because, you know, we're amazing, of course. Mm, of course, obviously. It comes without saying. I'm surprised they even make you go through that, knowing who you are. Well, mm-hmm. you know what? It's it's our clients. So we work with a client, and they're the ones selling the project. They're called the vendor and we're the builder. So as the builder, we've already built many projects all over Ontario, and uh, and basically it's pretty pretty much a shoe in for the builder. It's no problem because we have we've demonstrated we have the experience to complete these projects. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're at with this process. That's the Terry on registration requirement. You cannot sell a condo until you have this uh, this in place, and that's what we've been waiting for. So on the site right now, there is nothing, but eventually a next step would be like a sales pavilion and then people would well, come. The sales, the sales pavilion is already in place. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we have our, uh, we're going to have all our documentation ready and then it's going to be like a first like uh, friends and family VIP. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, can, I have a question. Can I uh, make a bid on the sales pavilion? I could go live in that. <laughs> well, you probably could. But so we're going to knock it down. No, okay? no, because you just... That is true. We're going to knock it down. Hey, we're going to knock it down. I'd like to rent the sales pavilion in Orangeville. But Nick, on that point, it is true, though. I notice a lot of developments around where I... The sales pavilions are nice-looking places. Yeah. They're all, like, prefab, right? And you can like, throw them up anywhere. Not, like, how does that work? Not, not necessarily. Like, oh, okay. You know, it could be, like, for example, if I have a, a building on this particular project, we have a house that's on the oh. site. So oh, okay. a lot of developers will will renovate the house to put the sales pavilion in there. Mm-hmm. It could be that you have a small plaza and you'll know, they'll they'll do like a they'll mm-hmm. do a fit out just for the sales office. Mm-hmm. Some major projects will will build a brand new sales office and then tear it down afterwards. So wow. sixty on so Broadway. That, that's common. Those are those are the big high profile projects. Yeah. However, you know, out in the in uh, outside of like, let's say for the low rise development, sometimes they'll have like a simple trailer. Sixty yeah. is the number sixty, yeah. by the way. Num- the number sixty on Broadway dot com. So yes. at this point, la- last question: from the moment that you're able to start selling to actually people being able to move in, it, give me a number. Is it twenty four months? Thirty six months? And, and in general, from, from, normally from starting or from from starting, did you say? Or like what? when you start to you know break I ground, shoveling the ground, shovel, shovels in the ground. Yeah, yeah. Well, That's the it, term. it depends on how long it takes to build the project. So if it's but two years is a good mark. That, the only reason I ask is because I want to know how long our relationship is going to be. Our relationship is going to be is going to surpass any project. <laughs> okay, on this because I just don't okay. want you. Once sixty's done, man, we're here. I don't want you. Well, I'm I don't, here. Yeah. I'm here to stay. You're here guys. To, stay. to stay. You know the only Howard, thing, Howard, you'll probably die first. The, <laughs> that God, God knows that's true. Um, I, the only thing that can make these appearances better is if they were more often, Nick. If we had you on, the people are just clamoring for more. Well, that's Nick what I like. This, to- that's what I like to do. I like to, you know, I got to keep them clamoring. Exactly. Right? Well, listen, man, we should talk about upping some I, of these appearances. I had just guys, there's something very important that you guys aren't talking about. What's that? Uh, my my event at the Albany Club is happening this Thursday. This Thursday, September 12th, 30. everybody. That's the Albany Club. I, I'm going to have an amazing presentation about my book. I've got some great panelists. I've got Ben Myers from Bullpen Consulting. He's one of the industry experts in All the right. condo industry. We've got Richard Joy, Executive Director of the uh, Urban Land Institute, ULI Toronto. I've got two panelists that are coming. We're going to talk about some amazing things, some amazing things in my book about the history of how condo started in Toronto. Uh it was a slow start, but we've seen an explosive growth in the 2000s. I'm going to pre- present some amazing projects coming soon to Toronto. 
and more, and it's going to be an amazing event. Are you guys coming? Or well, what? how do people get tickets for that? Well, you can show up at the Albany Club this Thursday at nine thirty in the morning. At five five thirty. <laughs> well, you can go the day before at five and start lining up. Well, pe- we, okay. people, I think I've heard people are already lining up now. It's five thirty at the Albany Club. You got it. Now, do you have to wear pants to that? PM. Is that do you have to? Yeah, do you, you need to wear pants? You got to work because I'm a strict no pants guy until uh, Thanksgiving. Sorry, I can't be. Uh, you know what? Well, that's why I'm not coming to your event next. Week. Well, don't be a child. Well, <laughs> you know, Nick, I uh, wanted to go, and then yeah. I had a conflict, and my guy tried to change the date for yeah, me. Yeah, your uh, guy did. Yeah, but did. you know what? I would change did the date he? if you tell me right now. I'm going to change the date for you guys. Okay. All right. Well, listen, my friend. <laughs> oh, we want everybody to go to the Albany Club. Pants are not optional. It's this Thursday at 5.30. Nick Ines will address many members and guests at the Albany Club. It's on King Street in Toronto. And for more information about what Nick is working on, it's the number 60 on Broadway.com. Good luck to you, my friend, and let's uh, catch up soon. Hasta luego. Hasta luego, mi amigo. Take it easy. Mi grande amigo. Mi buen amigo. Mi buen hermano. I think you should buy a condo in Orangeville. You and Doll could be Orange Villains. Uh, I don't know. It's crazy. Who knows what to do at this stage? You know, no, you know, I know. You're decrepit. You don't know. <laughs> you can't look after your house. You want. You don't necessarily want to live in a condo. What do you do? I know. I'm listen. It's uh, not easy at this stage of our lives. You're a couple years away from seventy. I'm turning sixty-five. I, I, I can't. I, I can't even figure out what I'm going to do this winter. Every time mm-hmm. I think about it, my head hurts. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the thing is, we've talked about, you know, in our, in our award-winning podcast, Aging with Energy, that you need energy. The Old Guys Travel Show, available where you get your podcast. Well, you need energy to travel. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you don't want to wait till you're like 75 to go to some adventure where you can't. Like, you use the word decrepit. I love that. Where you're just like shuffling around because you're... All your hips are fucked and your knees hurt and your show. And that's me now. But I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah it's funny because we've been thinking about somewhere to go this winter. And it's talk about energy. The energy of just looking at places <laughs> you know, like an Airbnb. I, I it's like, oh, I can't fucking be bothered. I know. This. You're looking at all the places and then dolls big on the uh, on the reviews. And it's like, uh, why can't? Why can't somebody just phone me up and say, here's where you're staying? I was just going to say, which time we would go, hey, hey, Howard, yeah. here are the things we, we're going to do. These are the tickets. Everything's yeah. booked. Just give me your credit card number. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've, I've been doing, I've been going through the same thing. The last couple of years, I don't know why I was more motivated. I guess I was excited by the idea that we could go and do the show anywhere. And mm-hmm. but, but having been away for 16 weeks last winter, mm-hmm. I know... And, and what that you're not going to do that. I'm again. not going to do that again. But then you start right. looking at different trips. And anyway, Dan Duran is back here. Looks a little cool up there at the lake. So I just quickly before we forget, I sent you guys a picture of my elbow. Yes. Uh, Fred mentioned it during the uh, chamber plan live read that I, I, I basically I don't know. I couple I, my elbow has been sore for a week or so. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm always sore in some way. But this was a weird soreness in, in my elbow bone, right, like right on the bone. And then it was bugging me for a couple of days. And on Thursday, the day after we did the last show, I was golfing, as you can imagine, which I do occasionally. <laughs> and as the day wore on, my elbow got bigger and bigger and it was hurting. But now it was swollen and hot to the touch, like, you know, like something was going on inside there. So I literally left the golf course. And went right to see my doctor. I just showed up at his door. I'm like, he's like, uh, he's got some people. I said, oh, wait, look at this. And my elbow is all <laughs> fucking <laughs> distended. I, I, I don't know. I said it, it looked like I had like a bigger than a baseball sized sw- swelling going on there. Mm-hmm. Did all the people in his waiting room kind of go? They were shocked. Yeah, they were, I know. I know. Uh, That's a, a bit yeah, like the better. elephant. <laughs> A bit like the elephant man. Yeah, I had elephant man elbow. Elephant elbow. Yeah, you did. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, you know, he should go in for before us. Yeah, he should. He needs help. <laughs> That's right. It's okay. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. He can go. He can go. Can go. We're, we're here with our child. We don't know why it's sick. But you, you elephant elbow, you go. <laughs> so uh, he gave me some. Uh, he we, we, he determined it was a couple things. I uh, got an infection apparently because I had a bit of a cut on my elbow. Um, and then I there's a, there's these things called bursa sacs. Yeah. And uh, you have them in your shoulders and your elbows, the back of your knees, whatever. And I have a bit of bursitis, and uh, it flared up because of the infection. And I got some antibiotics, and within 24 hours, I iced the shit out of it Thursday night. And, of course, I kept playing golf, whatever. <laughs> I love it. Fred called me on yeah, Friday morning. Weird. But it didn't, it didn't hurt to hit a golf ball. Yeah, but it, it doesn't. But it looked horrible. No, it's I know. Like I would think, you would think, boy, I don't want to make this any worse, so I'm going to shut it down for. Yeah, a I day wish I so. could, but, but I was uh, I was committed. Oh, okay. I was committed to playing in a tournament Friday and Saturday. But by Friday, it had gone down half size, and by now it's sort of back to normal. It still hurts a little bit, but did it affect your game? Not at all. Did your doctor tell you not to do it? He did not. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that's all you need if your doctor gave you the pass. I just said, am I going to make it worse by golfing? He goes, probably not. Hmm. Mm. No, but just knowing you, I would have thought you would have, like, thought, oh, boy, I can't screw with this. But anyway, um, you what? didn't, and everything's fine. <laughs> you know, bur- bursitis, um, you know, I've got it in the one knee. Yeah. You know, I first discovered it. And I was down here in the basement doing uh, something one day, and I, I knelt down, and then I looked because I thought I I had knelt on like on a screw or something, yeah. or something sharp. And I looked, and there's nothing there, and I thought that's weird. I, I knelt on something, and then it kept coming back, and that's the way it feels. And I still have it only in my one knee. It hasn't spread to anything else, but well, I have it in it's my weird. I have it in my left knee as well, and some of it flared up over the weekend from last weekend. Yeah, so while I was weird. while I was at the doctor, I said, okay, now you've looked at my elbow what do you think this thing on the back of my knee because it basically <laughs> it, you get water on it sort of swells up a little bit mm-hmm. but when you i just was laughing because i sent the picture to our our chat this is i thought it was funny and then fred <laughs> fred calls me up what the fuck's wrong <laughs> what the fuck was that <laughs> he says what the fuck's going on what's that what's that <laughs> I said, I don't know, man, but it's, uh, <laughs> and I still, been I, I've been icing it every uh, day since. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's still, like I said, it's still sore. It doesn't, it's not uh, hideous anymore. Was it affecting your afternoon computer sessions? Um, or you're off those for right I'm now? I'm off those for right now, yeah. Yeah. I have got, yeah. No, I've got nothing left to give. I got nothing left to give. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Um, Was okay. it observed by anyone else uh, in your intimate world? No, uh, she's away. Oh, okay. So this is a but well, high. But what bonus that is to yeah. have this problem when there's no, yeah, you know, no one in town. That's great. That's right. Um, okay, so let's get started with the Dandaran news. Uh, Fred, are you up to date on everything you need to do? No, I have one more here. You know, uh, Tim Niblett is a portfolio manager. Raymond James, a member of the Canadian Investors Protection Fund. Jay Bondi will be by tomorrow, and we're going to talk about what is money really. Okay, what is money? And, uh, uh, you know, that sounds pretty simple, but it will be a fascinating journey uh, through finance with Jay Bondi uh, tomorrow, uh, retirementsherpa.ca. That's an interesting uh, question. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, What is money? That's what (laughs) Dan Duran asks himself every day. Why am I doing this? Where's my money? (laughs) Where's the money, says Dan Duran. Uh, Well, listen, before the Dan Duran news, you know, Fred's already talked about Bodog. The Thursday night game, of course, is the uh, Bills in Miami. Will Tyreek Hill be playing in that game? Oh, I'm sure. Well, let's hear what Bodog has to say. Looking for a way to relax after a long day? Come on. Tired of being notified by life's bells and whistles? Yeah, I'm going to need that draft tomorrow. When you're ready to stop working so hard... You know it's time to play. Yes. It's easy to find your next favorite game at Bodog.net. Play free casino games, check out our beginner's guides, and get poker tips. Visit Bodog.net today. Hashtag make a play. Now, here's to a fella named Dan Duran, a hell of a guy with a hell of a big wang, the quintessential anchor man. His voice is nice and low. Huh. 
Gandaran, the anchorman, comes and asks for credentials. He has none. Can't tell a headline from his bum, but his voice is nice and low. Gandaran. Gandaran, the anchorman's here. He's prone to falling off his chair, but he's got a big wang, so he don't care, and his voice is nice and low. My voice is nice and low. And now, citizens, live from Lakeside, with news and views, here's movie anchorman, television series regular, and chief editorial, um, chief of the Humble and Fred newsroom, it's Daniel J. (laughs) Gieber-Duran. All right. Well, I, I, I we missed uh, this earlier in the show. I'll just do a brief mention that Sergio Mendez died yeah. uh, in between the times that we were uh, we were away. You know, Brazil '66 and uh, all that. That's a uh, you know something to be missed and uh, appreciated. If yes. you happen to listen to, uh, you know, it's funny. You know, recently. radio stations as they evolved. Howard, remember you worked at Boom when they would play all sorts of sort of music. Yeah. You know, from different genres, sort of. Um, you know, back in the day, 1050 Chum, you know, a top 40 radio station. I was thinking about that. They, You know, at any given time, they could have a rock. The Beatles on, Glenn Campbell, Sergio Mendez. And that's where I remember that from. What was that song? Na, 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 or whatever. No, I don't know. His his uh, thing was. But anyway, just a, a thought about radio. And yeah. Well, that's interesting. No, where I, Sergio interesting. Uh, plays yeah. a part. Well, I, I have to admit, because I don't... When you put up on the chat, Sergio Mendez has died. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest, and I'm just being, you know, because it's real. <laughs> I was completely unaffected by the death of Sergio. <laughs> That's why I put it up. That's why I put it up. I, I, I saw that and went. Well, I, don't, I don't. Not that I, I don't know that I said I don't care, but I. It just didn't affect me. No. In any way, shape, or form. In fact, mm-hmm. I was like, "Who's Sir?" I had to go look up Sergio Mendez for a second, and I, that's terrible. <laughs> and I don't know what song you're talking about, na 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 song. But I'm just having to be the real. Mm-hmm. Anyway, well, you're with Sergio as I am with Star Wars. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, that's a great that's a great comparison. Fucking some <laughs> some obscure Spanish. Like I can't believe that you wouldn't well, know. You can't about believe, Sergio, yeah, and he you know what I'll have do? Some impact yeah, okay. on your life. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back and listen to all the Sergio Mendes songs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dan, please get, Dan, I'm sorry I, Let me apologize here a, yeah. And now with news and views Here's All Dan right. Duran Okay, so Duran. it is a music story I'm bringing to the masses today Using AI for criming is happening with music And it's kind of interesting how they're doing it. So to begin with, you know, all musicians get tiny, tiny, tiny royalty checks from the streaming services based on the number of times they were streamed. Mm. Each song was streamed. Okay. Okay. So this this guy got a guy at an AI company to create thousands of songs every week, resulting in hundreds of thousands of songs. Then the scammer renamed the songs using some sort of weird naming convention, you know, putting words together like uh, zygotes and zygotic and zimbadoing and that kind of thing. Same thing for the artist's names. And uh, then to manufacture streams for these fake songs, uh, this guy uh, used Hmm. bots that streamed the songs billions of times without Hmm. any real person actually listening to it. And uh, so the bots, mainly the streams were converted into royalty paychecks for the people behind them. And here's where the criming part uh, comes in, is that they had all agreed uh, with the streaming service terms and conditions not to do such a thing. So the guy that was in charge of this is uh, being charged with three counts of frauding and uh, up to about 20 years in jail if he is convicted. Mm. That's very... uh (laughs) is it? <laughs> Same thing. What I can't say interesting Stupid again fucker. today. No, <laughs> I I heard I saw this scam story about this scam today. I was going to send it to you. The scam? A scam? A different scam? Oh, a different scam. Oh, okay. So apparently in Toronto, people are ordering a taxi sign for like yeah. 30, thirty bucks off Amazon. Did you hear this story, Dan? Yes. No, no I have no idea. And so the people are getting into their their fake cabs. And uh, when the riders go to give them their credit card, they, they scan the credit card, and then they have to put in the PIN. And what they're doing is, they're t- whatever the fare is, they get that. Mm-hmm. And then they take the PIN, 
and then they go and withdraw a couple thousand dollars. They they copy the credit card somehow or another. They mm-hmm. figure it out and they clone well, the card. Or they clone like the that. card and then they have the yeah. person's pin, and then they go and take money out of their account. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Those are fucking. Then, that's a that's a pretty ballsy thing to do. And um, Amazon was approached about. Should you continue to sell these things? Because this has become a problem right across North America. And uh, their response was, oh, well, it's not illegal to sell these signs, so we will continue to sell them. I thought that could have maybe been a, you know, a gesture of, yeah, maybe maybe we will stop selling these. And what do, but what do people, well, yeah, they're th- like 30 bucks. A, well, what do people want yeah. a fake ca- cab sign for? Exactly. <laughs> To scam. Yeah, <laughs> that's to scam people. Isn't that enough? Well, no, there's got to be. An, okay, that's fine. We've established that people are being scammed by fake cabs. But what's the real point of having a fake cab sign off Amazon? Well, I guess maybe in third world countries where any guy can just, you know, take people around. Maybe it, it's to... For them, who knows? Yeah, I don't like, think there's, there's a no, lot of there's no real licensing or anything. Yeah, but I don't I, know. listen again, I don't want to keep p- pushing back on this, but I don't think the third world is ordering a lot of stuff off Amazon. Are I mean, you kidding me? No, when I'm I was saying, in the Dominican. It was huge. Okay, but I'm. I mean, when I'm, I was yeah. going to say the third world isn't yeah. ordering. That's not the main buyer of cab signs. There's got to be some reason they have mm-hmm. cab signs. Let me go and find. No, I was out. just giving. I was just giving an example because. Mm. Uh, you so know, well, real, real mm. cabs, or maybe perhaps Halloween's coming up, and there's some sort of you know. Yeah, you want to go dress like a cab. Yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> would it, yeah, but would real cabs? Because they look sort of flimsy. Yeah, from what let I me saw. Go on, let me go on the Amazon right now. Cab sign, cab taxi sign. Here we go. <clears throat> there it is. So is this like a flat decal yeah, kind of thing? No, no, it no. Like it's the actual thing you put on your roof. And uh, taxi lamp signs. They got tons of them. Oh, uh, well, there you go. Well, there you go. Maybe all of them. Probably you can probably get the the, the card cloners on. on I got uh, taxi. Uh, I can get one delivered tomorrow for twenty bucks. Oh, okay. Um, do, do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to start doing in the winter. I won't go away. I'll just become. <laughs> I'll just become. <laughs> I'll, I'll call myself Juber. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> Anyone order a Juber? Juber for Mr. Patterson. Uh, all right. Tomorrow on the program, uh, we're not back to uh, four days a week yet, so just relax. Tomorrow we are doing a program, and this is going to be very, very, and I'm using it, interesting, Dan, because Dr. Robert Lamb who is a chief urologist, will be on the program tomorrow. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, yes. Emerson, all right? about, yeah, yeah. All about, yeah, all about should you get a colonoscopy and also what's going on in the urology and the prostate. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. So we're going we're gonna to review the entire intestinal system on the... Uh, Not the... the no, tomorrow. no. Okay. We're going to talk about no. urology. Gonna localize it. Lo- localize we're going to go right it. down. Okay. We're not doing the own... T- he doesn't do bowels and things. He doesn't Silly. do bowels? No, he doesn't do bowels. Oh. What does he just do? Then? Well, he's the chief of urologist. He's a chief urology at Sunnybrook. Okay, so what's urology? Then? I don't That's know. your... Where you're... What? What? Okay, you know, I've got no time for this today. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, what is urology? Oh, my God. I get all the uh, doctor names mixed up. Okay, so uh, uh, urology... They're not doctor wow. names. Did you not pay... Oh, I forgot. No, for, I forgot. You've only got grade 10. I forgot. It's hard to believe a guy with a massive cock doesn't know what urology is. He thinks it's a bowel, is what he thinks. Okay, so, well, no, he well, thought the bowel was the prostate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. But, okay. So, urine, urology, is that, you know, putting it together? So, it's just about the, the peeing, urinary. The the, it's the urinary tract as well as the male genital system. Yes. Or the okay. MGS. All right. You go no to poop. Your, urine. Has nothing to do with your bowels or your. your, It has nothing to do with your. It's. It's nothing to do with your intestines. Okay, now I know. Yeah, the the poop. You go to an ass doctor. Fuck. Right. Okay. I shouldn't uh, say that because Dan will think that's true. But this is the guy where you're talking about, uh, you know, colonoscopy. Organs. Well, you know what, Dan? Organs under the domain of urology include the kidneys, adrenal glands, your your 
ureters, urinary bladder, urethra. So there's no bowels in there, Dan. There's no intestines in there. Okay. It's amazing. In fact, you know what? I envy you. At 66 urology, you didn't, really didn't know what a urologist no, is. It's wonderful to, to be 66. Well, I thought it was and in have that never, area. ever had to deal with a urologist. It's great, actually. Okay. Well, I just thought it was in that area. So because of a colonoscopy, you're dealing with poop because you got to go up the poop chute for that, right? Yeah. Poop and shit. Yeah, yeah poop and shit. Okay. <laughs> you can't well. um, <laughs> You know, <laughs> well, I, I, I just... How about puke? Puke that shit to puke. <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why Doll doesn't listen to this show. This highbrow. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it. Don't forget the puke. Uh, <laughs> That's right. This is so. I don't. This seems like it would be right up Doll's alley. <laughs> right up her alley. But, by the way, Dan, you yeah. were going to do that bit. You know, the music bit? Yeah. It's uh, still There's being a, worked on, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you see um, White Stripes, Seven Nation Army now? They, they're. Suing Trump, they're going after him. They're yep. suing him for using it. What's Here's the bit that Dan's, What's the bit Dan's going to do? Well, he's going to put together all the um, the, the bands that have been. Uh, oh, okay. Outlawed. Well, that sounds like a cool bit, Dan. It'll take yeah. four fucking hours at this point. Like all the bands, like yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, it's getting more and more than one. Like, doesn't start. that tell you something? <laughs> yeah. Started out with twenty-two like, songs. I don't know. None of it makes any 30. sense. <laughs> um, I thought because we're one month away. From our 13th anniversary of doing this podcast. Mm-hmm. And I want, I want you to know in advance, I didn't give it a lot of thought. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and because of our advanced age, we might only do this once or twice and then forget about it. But I thought it might be fun, if I could remember, to play some bits that were part of the podcast years only. Not the old Humble and Fred number one in 97, mm-hmm. but things that came up on our show even predating Dan Duran, some of it will involve Dan Duran. I found an old thing we hadn't played in years, the uh, woman that sang, Dan Duran, weather, weather. Remember that little? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, 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 yep. yes. But I came across, I was, I was previewing some sounds this morning on my little soundboard here, and I thought it might be fun for the people to hear something they may remember from Humble and Fred, the podcast years. And I don't, I don't even know what the context was for this thing I'm about to play, but I just found it funny because it's, it's just you making a noise, but we set it to a, a pink song. Okay? Are you okay. ready? All right. Yep. Jing, jing. Jing, jing. Jing, 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 jing. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what that was, but... <laughs> I couldn't stop listening to it this morning. Jing, jing. Jing, 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 jing. (laughs) So, if I remember tomorrow, I'll play one Humble and Fred podcast year bit. Let me ask you, remember that? The woman that phoned in and laughed? (laughs) Was that podcast years or radio years? Remember that... You used to play. We used yeah, to play I don't know what I did she, with it. I may have she used crashed to laugh it. hysterically. Yes. Remember? Yeah. Was that radio or podcast? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think. Just I, asking. All right. It's a bit aggressive, though. You get all You're, short with me. No, I'm not getting short. You just got to. It's a bit aggressive, the way you were asking. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Jing, jing. Jing, jing. That, that's the guy I want to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> jing 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 jing. That does jing jing jing. And uh, one like, and yeah. and what's that? <laughs> Where did that? Like, I have fucking no idea. What inspired that? Like I you don't no you lose context. Earthly right? idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, I told you I had no context for it. And no uh, just before we finish today, for the last time, well, maybe maybe not the last time, but at least as a, a fitting tribute to finish the program. This is humble and Fred. 
episode of Humble and Fred was brought to you by the Retirement Sherpa, the Chambers Plan, Boron One, Bodog, our returning sponsor, Kelsey's Original Roadhouse, and our newest sponsor, Ridley Funeral Home. For contests and comments, we read all of the emails. Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com. That's Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com. Big email show coming up your way tomorrow. So tell us what you think and maybe tell you our uh, tell your friends about us. We would appreciate that. Rate the podcast, share the episode. That would be cool. For the Humble and Fred from the Kevin House Zoom Theater, I'm the Dan Duran. And remember, even if you don't have a father that told you, I am your father. Go out there and enjoy every goddamn day. Bottles and cans, just clap your hands, or just clap your hands. Where's that?